Hey everyone, Norvex here. Just putting together a video on the axe tree. Uh, it's not a guide on how to play. This is just going to be going through, showing each skill, um, showing how they work. And I will throw in a few tips here and there. Um, without further ado, I'll get started. Okay, so the first Q skill on axe is called Rending Strike. It's honestly pretty much useless. There are better skills to use in this in every situation. Um, it does single target damage. With, and the range is 3 meters, it applies one bleed stack. And that's really all there is to know about it. You really shouldn't use it at all, because like I said, there are better options, which we'll get into. Yoink! Okay, so the next Q on Axe is called Rending Spin. It's a 5 meter AoE around you. Um, it applies a bleed stack when you hit. It also does more damage if the enemy is more than two and a half meters away. So I'll show you here on this mob, if I hit him up close, I'll do a lower damage, and if I hit him from far away, I'll do a higher damage. So watch here. So I hit him there, I do 137. Now if I stand further away and I hit him, I did over 200. So when you're using this skill, you always try and back off when you hit someone, because you're gonna do a lot more damage that way. Um, this skill's not as common as the third Q, but it is useful um, in big groups where you maybe don't, you need the extra range or you want to hit everyone around you. But like I said, it's really not as common as the third Q because the third Q, which we'll get into, has a lot more utility and damage. So here we go. The third Q is Rending Rage. You can hit in a cone in front of you, three meters away. You get to cast it twice, doing... If you cast twice, you do more damage than any of the other skills. Um, but it's only in that cone in front of you, and it's only 3 meter range. And so once you cast those two, you can now get an option to leap and root anyone where you hit. So it's a super good utility skill. You can also, after you cast those first two Qs, not do anything. Wait 2.5 seconds and you can cast them again. So it's the highest DPS, and you have that utility option. Plus, you put a bleed on every hit, which means you can get three stacks very quickly. Um, so that's why the third Q is really the only Q anyone runs um, in PvP or PvE. The other Qs are just... Um, they're outmatched in every way by this Q, essentially. You watch here, I'm going to root these mobs. So there we go. And my... Skill went on cooldown for six seconds when I rooted those mobs. Uh, but just to reiterate, as far as Qs go on the axes, 95% of the time, unless you have a very specific reason you want to use the other one, this is going to be the skill to use. Because you get the option to do more damage, you get bleed stacks a lot faster, and you have that CC, which with great axes, you got this CC. This is the only CC that every axe has. When I see CC, I mean crowd control, which means a root or a stun or something along those lines. This is the only one that axes have, aside from Realm Breaker, which we'll get into later. And you can see here in the background, I'm just going through and showing the tooltip on each weapon. Um, you'll notice, depending on the weapon, and you can look at this in-game because it's going to vary with your spec and, and the tier of weapon you have. Um, different axes do different amounts of damage on the Q. Um, part of it is whether they're one hand or two hand. Of course, the only one hand is battle axe. Um, the other part of it is the base weapons. So like halberd and great axe that don't require a artifact to craft. They do less damage because they have less IP than weapons that require an artifact. Of course, realm breaker is going to be the highest because it's that Avalonian weapon. And that's true across all weapon lines, is that the Avalonian weapons have the highest base damage. So moving into W skills, the first W on all the axes is, is called Deadly Chop. It has a half a second cast time. It has a three meter range. You can hit one target with it. And it's going to do a ton of damage. And it's going to pierce their armor by a certain value, depending on the tier, um, for eight seconds. So it's a lower pierce, but it's for 8 seconds. So it's super strong if you're trying to focus down one target. Uh, but it's really not that common to see it run outside of some 
some very specific build. Anyway, I'll show you here how it works. I'm going to hit this wolf and you'll see that He's going to take a ton of damage, and then I'll show you the tooltip under him. He takes that buff, and he's going to take more damage. So, coming up on him now, I'm going to cast the W. Takes a bunch of damage. He's got that pierce on him. And now when I do my Qs, I do more damage to him. And I'll just show you here again on this boar the difference in damage after I pierce. I'll bring up the combat log. You can see here I did 164 damage with my Q. Then I pierced him, and now the next one does 197. So it's definitely uh, a significant change in damage when you pierce someone. Okay, so the next W, which is one of the most common you'll see on axes, is called Adrenaline Boost. So you cast it on yourself, you get... 25% damage, 40% move speed, and 40% attack speed. Now, this initially you only get for three and a half seconds. If you don't hit anyone directly, so that means it can't be bleed damage, it has to be hitting them directly with a skill. Um, if you don't hit someone within three and a half seconds, the buff runs out. If you hit them before that three and a half seconds, the buff lasts for the full seven seconds. So you can see here, I'm going to try it on this wolf. But I'll just cast the W and run around. You'll see it runs out in about three and a half seconds, which it's supposed to, because I don't hit anything. And then we'll wait for the cooldown and try it again on the wolf. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to cast the W again. This time I'm going to hit the wolf. And now the buff lasts a lot longer. And you can see here I'm attacking a lot faster. And I'll show you again on this moose once it's off cooldown again. It's auto attacking. You can see it's fairly slow. It's a great axe. Now I cast a W. I'm doing more damage and I'm attacking a lot faster. So you'll see this a lot on builds like Bear Paws or Great Axe, things that need no mobility to jump in. Uh, it's a very, very good skill. So the next W is Battle Rush. It's very, very rare to see someone use this. Um, you charge 12 meters, it has a high energy cost 60 energy versus on this tier, versus the other skills are all lower. Uh, you charge 12 meters, any allies around you get increased healing by 20%, and enemies take 20% less healing. Um, you don't see many people run it because you can just run Adrenal Adrenaline Rush, and you're going to get a lot better benefits out of Adrenaline Rush. If you can hit an enemy, then you will try to use Battle Rush, but you will see it used in very specific situations. Okay, so the next W is called Internal Bleeding. Uh, it's used in some builds like Halberd. Um, you cast it, everyone within a 6 meter range takes some damage, and they also get a debuff on them that bleeds them every half a second, only if they're moving. So if they stand still, they don't take any damage from the bleed. They'll still take the additional damage, but they won't take any of the bleed. So watch this moose. Cast it on him, he takes some initial damage. While he's moving, he takes damage. You see he stopped there to headbutt me, and he didn't take damage for that tick because he wasn't moving. Uh, so this is very good in um, large scale for weapons like Halberd, for example, that the E doesn't do a lot of big damage anyway, so this gives you a lot of damage over time. Uh, very good sustained damage skill, and it's only on a 15 second cooldown with a 6 meter AoE. Like I said, not the most common W, but you will see it played. Okay, so the last W is called Raging Blades. Um, it makes a donut around you of blades that expands, and every time someone gets hit by it, you get a damage buff, and they take a significant amount of damage. It stacks up to 10 times for 40% extra damage. This used to be one of the best skills on axes. Um, now... You don't see it a lot because, like I said, it's a donut. It used to be just an AoE around you, so now you actually have to kind of aim it. And if you're too close to your enemy, it won't hit them. So it works very well in large groups where there's lots of enemies to hit. But, like you can see here on the screen, if you're standing too close, your enemy's inside it and they don't get hit by those blades. So it doesn't work very well. And it's hard to 
it's hard to see where it is because the animation doesn't really indicate the hitbox well. Um, so this is useful, say you're rounding up groups of mobs, because you can always get that 10 stacks, but um, honestly, Adrenaline Rush is better. You get more benefits, you get the move speed, you get 25% attack damage, you don't have to play this this game of trying to get the enemy in the sweet spot to hit them 10 times to get your full damage. So, I wouldn't recommend the skill, I'd recommend just use Adrenaline Rush if you need damage increase. Okay, so before I get into weapon specifics on the skills, uh, we'll get into passives. So you get deep cuts, which every four auto attacks, you get a little debuff applied on the enemy and they take some damage over a second and a half. So I'll just show that here on this wolf. So I attack him once, twice, three times, and four times. And now he's got a bleed on him that does damage over a second and a half. I was mousing over the tooltip, which had the same icon on my player, but I'll show you again on this tree. So we're going to hit him once. Actually, we only had him twice because we already had two stacks, and now he's got that bleed, which disappears very quickly, but it does about 100 damage, we'll say. It's not super useful because it's a single target skill, and axes are very... If you're looking for single target damage, axes aren't really the choice. Axes are all about AoE and damage over time. Okay, so the next passive is called Life Leech. You see this on a lot of weapons, but uh, every time you auto attack, you take you heal for 15% of the damage you did in that auto attack. So it's very good for um, fame farming, for soloing boss mobs or something along those lines. Um, there's not a lot to say about it, but I'll just show it here on this mob. I'm gonna auto attack them and you can see my combat log. And on the screen, I'm I'm uh, healing damage and also this scales with damage buffs so you can see here I cast my raging blades and I heal more life because I have a damage buff which is pretty straightforward I would say okay so the next passive is called increased defense every five attack normal attacks you get a hundred bonus defense it's not super useful because you gotta attack something five times to, to get it up and those stacks only have a limited duration before they disappear. And I'll show you here on this wolf. I'm going to attack him five times. And I'll get a buff that'll make me take less damage. Pretty self-explanatory. You can see here, once I have the bonus the defense, I was taking 43 damage from the wolf. And then I was taking 33 once I had it up. But it is a pretty short duration. Now the last passive, which is one of the most common ones, is going to be... The fourth passive, which every four auto attacks instead of five, you get 8% bonus damage, which applies to all your damage. So it's a very good skill because it's not single target, so it's going to help on your E, it's going to help on your W, it's going to help on your bleeds. Um, so it's only 8%, but you only got to do four auto attacks to get it. And really, you're probably not going to have it up a lot and you're really not going to pay attention to it when you're dropping your damage because it's too much to micromanage but every once in a while it's going to help out your damage plus you always have bleeds up on your enemies so uh, it's always going to be doing something so someone's always going to be bleeding so it's pretty much the preferred choice outside of pve okay so now i'll get into some of the differences between the weapons themselves and so you can see here the great axe has physical damage 220 on this d8 it has resilience penetration 40%, which is a skill that ignores focus fire protection. And just quickly, focus fire protection is a skill, or is a mechanic where if a player is getting hit by multiple enemies, they start taking less damage. So this stat ignores some of that. So you can see on the halberd, you get 50%. So it ignores a little bit more. It does the same base damage as the great axe. The battle axe has less base damage but it does have more attack speed which I'll show shortly. It also has 50% resilience penetration. Um, all of the axes have the same bonus health and regen bonus. Here on the Realm Breaker it's got uh, 240 base damage and it's going to have the highest because it is the Avalonian weapon. That's true across all weapon trees is that the Avalonian weapons have the highest IP uh, tier for tier. Uh, the Bear Paws has low physical damage, but it does have the highest attack speed. It has 50% resilience penetration. I guess I lied earlier, the max health does scale with IP. 
but it's it's a very small difference. So next you got the carrying collar. It's got the 50% resilience penetration. This and the halberd were actually just buffed from 30% to 50%. Um, the carrying collars, kind of the next tier up in damage above the great axe and halberd in terms of base damage. Infernal scythe is the second highest behind realm breaker. Um, Infernal scythe has the 40% resilience penetration. So they're fairly even across the board in terms of base damage and you're either going to be at 40 percent or 50 percent resilience penetration so not a huge difference between the two like i said halberd and carrier and collar used to be at 30 percent but they recently got a buff to 50 percent which made them a little bit more viable i'm just going through the attack speed here you can see on the the bear paws it's 1.4 per second all of the the two-handed axes uh, i should say Great Axe, Halberd, Carrion, Collar, Realm Breaker, and Scythe are 0 0.8 second attack speed. The Battle Axe is 1.1, and the Bear Paws, of course, are 1.4. So, the big advantage with the with the Battle Axe, of course, is that you can choose an offhand. So, you can wear a Torch to get more attack speed. You can wear a Muzak to get more damage and and uh, reduce the ability cost, which is important on Axis because they suck up mana big time. It's really all the difference between them. Um, and as far as the two-hand Axis go, there's not a whole lot of difference in the base stats. The Battle Axe is kind of a weird duck because it's the only one-hand weapon in the entire line. Okay, so first up for E-Skills, we have the Whirlwind on Great Axe. Um, was recently changed. It was nerfed slightly. Um, so now, when you spin, you do six ticks over two and a half seconds, and each tick does more consecutive damage if you've hit that target before. So I'll show you here on this mob, I'm going to spin. Every time I hit him, I'm going to do more damage. So now with Great Axe, you really need to hit to stick to your target to do the max damage to get those higher damage ticks out. Um, so that was really all the nerf was. The damage was reduced slightly. Uh, but it's still a very good skill, very good weapon. And you can see here, just looking through the combat log, you can see it goes from 170 damage up to 220 um, when I do the full ticks on them. And I'll show you again here on this tree and the bear to the left. Um, I'm going to spin on the tree and get a few ticks on him and then I'll hit the bear right after and you'll see that the bear starts from the base damage uh, just like the tooltip says. You can see here I'm going to spin on the tree, start at 177, then the first tick on the bear is also 177 even though I'm already like three spins into my skill. So overall the Great Axe E um, it's a good skill. It's hard to get off in PvP to get your full ticks on someone because you got you got to have them locked down to do that um, the AOE is small it's very good in PvE in in group fame farming you do a lot of damage on the mobs because of course they aren't going to run away from you or try to move out of your skill okay so next up for ease we have the battle axe um, this was recently changed as well you can see here you can cast this twice the first time you do damage based on how many stacks you have on the enemy how many bleed stacks I should say and it's about a 40% difference between no stacks and having three stacks. So it's important to stack up before you use this. So once you use that first cast, it goes on a 10 second cooldown. You get the option for the next 10 seconds to use the healing ability, which also scales based on the amount of stacks you have. And it's a very narrow 17 meter um, strip that you throw it in. So it can it is a one of the harder skill shots to hit especially if your enemy is moving. Um, but you see here it's on a 20 second cooldown because I used the healing ability. So this one's a neat skill. Um, you have the option to just do a bunch of damage every 10 seconds or if you need that heal you can use it but at the cost of putting it on cooldown for 20 seconds. And I'm going to show you how narrow this cone is here in a second on a mob. So just for an example I'm going to show you how close you need to be to hit something. Or, or miss something. In this case, I'm going to try not to hit this mob. So I'm going to throw the first D. Doesn't hit him. 
And that was fairly obvious it wouldn't. But now the next one I'm going to throw it right beside him. It almost touches him, but still no damage. So uh, with the battle axe, you do need to be accurate in order to get your damage off. Okay, so next up we have the halberd, which is my favorite weapon. Um, the E is a 7 meter radius that does okay damage. It only has a 15 second cooldown, so that's nice. Uh, the main feature of it, though, is that if you hit an enemy in that 7 meter radius that has bleed stacks on them, it spreads that same amount of bleed stacks to everyone else. So if you have an enemy with 3 bleed stacks and you hit it, everyone that gets hit by this skill now has 3 bleed stacks. And I'll show you here, you can also um, use it to 3 stack an enemy. So if you hit an enemy with 2 stacks and they're the highest, they'll also get a third stack. Uh, but of course this syncs very well with the third Q because you can get your stacks up so quickly. You hit one or two enemies, get three stacks on them, then you hit your E and now everyone's bleeding and they have reduced um, healing. because It's a small amount, it's 12%, but it's very easy to get everyone stacked up to three stacks. So very good pressure weapon. Okay, so next up we've got the carrying collar. Uh, it's kind of a niche weapon for, say, crystals. It does a big strip, a few meters wide, um, and it's on an 18 second cooldown, but it does an initial damage, and then it does almost the same amount of damage, again, over 5 seconds as a bleed, uh, and it reduces the healing received on those enemies by 30% for 5 seconds, which is really good, especially, like I said, in crystal arenas or something like that. You'll see this used a lot. Uh, it's not a very common weapon outside of that. And you see, you just throw the, the raven, it goes out in a path, it hits the enemy, does some damage, and then they bleed over five seconds and reduce healing in the case of um, PvP or if you happen to run into a healing mob in a dungeon, I guess. Um, but overall, pretty good range, um, but not much uses outside of, like I said, those few niche, niche cases. Okay, so next up we have the Bear Paws, which is probably one of the most popular weapons in the game right now. Um, it has called an E called Razor Cut, which lets you leap 12 meters and does damages in cone in front of you. Also does true damage, 100, or well, on this tier, 180 true damage over 6 seconds. So that ignores any damage reduction. So they're going to take that full damage. And if you hit a player, and as I'll show you here, if I hit a mob... It doesn't reduce the cooldown, but if you hit a player, it's going to reduce your cooldown by 40%. So the the base cooldown is 30 seconds. If you hit someone with it, the cooldown is now only 18 seconds. So uh, very good skill. You can get it on a short cooldown as long as you're hitting people, and it adds a lot of mobility. So you'll see this used a lot for, for solo ganking, for small scale. You're going to run the third Q, run Adrenaline Rush and run razor cut of course and you have lots of mobility and good damage output so if you've been ganked recently there's a good chance it was by bear paws so next up we've got the realm breaker another super popular axe right now is the only axe with a crowd control ability on it aside from the root on the queue um, so this one's going to do a ton of damage at the target location on 25 second cooldown Hits in a 4 meter radius, and then there's a cone that throws out, goes out in front of it and knocks up enemies um, that are inside the cone. So, very useful. And it also reduces their max health by 20% for 5 seconds. So you've got a 5 second window where um, they're a little bit easier to burst down. So, very popular weapon in, in small scale. And I'll just show you here again. I'm going to hit in front of this mob. So it gets knocked up in the cone, but it doesn't take any damage because it wasn't in that 4 meter radius. And then I'm going to run around here for a few seconds, and we'll wait for the cooldown to come up. And I'll show you, I can hit these bats and kill them, but the mage isn't going to take any damage, it's just going to get knocked up. So a few seconds here, you can see, hit the bats, mage gets knocked up, but doesn't take any damage, so that's how the skill works. Okay, so next up we have the Infernal Scythe, which was recently reworked. Um, so it's got an E called Bloody Reap, and you do two AoEs in a 5 meter radius. Um, the first one does the base damage, and then the second one is conditional. If the enemy has more than 40% health, 
they're going to take the same damage again. But if they're below 40%, they'll take over double. So this is an execute weapon the same as Bloodletter. When an enemy's low, you do more damage to them with your E. So it's a very good AoE execute weapon. And it's on a fairly short cooldown. So you can see here, I cast it. I just do two damages of the same damage. I'll show you that here in the combat log. So you can see here, I cast my E. This boar is going to take... I can get to the end of the log here. It's going to take 370 damage. And then after that, he was still above 40. So he took 370 again. So now I'm off cooldown. I'll test it on this here. And I'm going to cast my E. Because he's below 40%. It actually just kills him right off the hop. So I'm going to go find a stronger mob to try it again. Okay, so here we go. I've got this empowered mob. I'm going to bring it down to 40%. Then I'll cast my E. And then I'll show you the combat log. There we go. I got it under 40. Cast E. First damage. Second damage. And now we'll take a look at the combat log. And you'll see here. The first tick, 360. And then because it was below 40% on the second tick, it does 800 damage. So um, with this weapon, if you want to do your damage, you need to make sure that they're under 40% on that second tick. And on that subject, you can actually get them below 40 with the first tick, then the second tick will still take it. So you can see on this wolf, I used the first tick to get him below 40, and then he was below 40 on the second tick, so he took the bonus damage. So uh, with this skill, as long as you sort of know how much damage they're going to take on that first tick, you can use it before they're under that 40%, because that first tick could bring them under 40 and so with the Infernal Scythe covered off, that wraps up all of the weapons. I uh, hope that gives you a base understanding of how all the axes work and, and what skills mesh well together. Um, if there's any questions, leave them in the comments. Uh, but overall, I think axe is a, it's a very fun weapon to play. It's very beginner friendly. It's an easy to play weapon. There's not, you don't have to worry about stacking up to do your damage. Um, there's very few conditional damage items. Most of the time when you're doing damage, it's just hit them and the damage is done. Aside from, say, Scythe, where you need to make sure they're under 40%. Stuff like that. Uh, it's a very good bruiser weapon. Um, you can put a lot of pressure a backline with this. There's very good fame farming or PvE options in the tree. So, if you're just starting out in Albion and you're looking to be a melee DPS and, and you're looking for a tree to spend your time specking up, I definitely recommend Axis.